very funny, I can tell you, from the Ronnie camp. And this is the last frame before the mid-session interval. It's the type of shot that he usually pots when he's flowing, but looking at that, he's got away with it slightly. Well, Ronnie, he's, he's up on the chair. <laughs> What's going on out there? That's the first time since 1977. I've been coming to the Crucible since 77. I've never seen anyone stand on their seat to look at a shot. Maybe the referee was in the way, but uh, very, very unusual. This is a big frame for Ronnie O'Sullivan. It will suggest patience is a virtue, as far as Ronnie's concerned at the moment. Well, this is another example. If he doesn't fancy the pot, he's over Randy's position. Just glance off the red to the right of the white, and he's got the perfect safety shot. <coughs> Cue ball cleaned again. Ronnie sat there suffering. It's taken over five minutes for this break as well by Peter. <coughs> five minutes and 20 seconds. We keep saying it. Ronnie made that maximum here in 1997. There you go, we just passed that 5 minutes 20 seconds and the break's 12. Yeah. Well, he for all the twice. time he took, in the end, he missed the red. <laughs> well, Ronnie's looking at him, but uh, that's amazing. Uh, Peter's not even wanting to look anywhere near Ronnie, but uh, what a reaction from Ronnie O'Sullivan there. <laughs> a lot of psychology going on out there, John. Well, there is, and I think Ronnie purposely... I mean, normally, Ronnie would have been out of his seat like a greyhound, wouldn't he? But he just wanted to sit there and wait for Peter to come back to his seat. So he could give him, well, whatever look. But Ronnie trying to force the issue, and he's not good on One. the colour. He's got to take the black on. The red's over the pocket. It's a tricky black. Big shot coming up. <laughs> This is tough. Mm, Ronnie O'Sullivan on the top jaw. I think Ronnie there was on the the verge of conceding. This is a war of the mind. This. He just checked as he walked away from the table there, and I wasn't quite sure, because in the past, Ronnie has conceded frames with 12 and 13 reds on the table, John. I think he was on the verge of conceding, because he now now knows that this is a good, easy chance for Peter, and Peter is going to make the most of it. Mm -hmm. And how right he was, because Peter Redden has got a red and a black, and he'll be struggling without taking a big risk to get any more. I'm afraid that's sending out all the wrong messages to Peter Ebden. Peter Ebden will be thinking it's working. And once again he's overcut it. But he's covered it, so there's no pot for Ronnie to go at. for the first time this evening we're having shouts of come on Ronnie I think this packed crucible audience realised that there's a, a problem for the defending champion here but that was an excellent shot the touch there exquisite well 
afraid we might see a few touches here because there's very little else that Peter Ebden can do here. We need a touching ball to resolve this. Well, yes, with that red over the corner, but it's quite a big target there, isn't there, with the pink, the yellow, the brown. That's what I was saying, John. If he can get a touching ball, it's easy to run up there, isn't it? And that could be touching. Mm, he's not given it. He'd have said, when the referee has a look, he thinks it's touching. Well, Peter Ebden's having a closer look. There's a gap. There's a gap there. I mean, Brindad said there's a gap there. There's a gap. There's a gap there. There's a gap. Peter Ebden doesn't believe him. Ronnie's going to come and have a look. <laughs> well, who's got the best eyesight? <laughs> Two to one, John. <laughs> Two to one. <laughs> Ronnie agrees with the referee. <laughs> Ronnie said I'll give the table a nudge Peter not impressed if it had been touching you see he could have ran up the table and covered that red he'd got the yellow the brown and the pink to cover behind Hasn't quite hit it. Peter Ebden, 46. Well, Ronnie's coming to the table. He needs this red, a black, and then he'll have to start looking for a few snookers. One. And the red's in a pretty good position to get a good snooker in behind the black. Well, he's gone too far. He snookered himself here. Yeah, it's not hey. beyond the realms of possibility. You know, 46 behind. One snooker on this red and the free ball would give him a chance. And there's the snooker. Daniel Sullivan. Well, Peter, just looking over this, and John and Ken in the studio with me, what's your view of what we've been seeing, particularly in this frame, because the two men really winding one another up out there? Well, they are, Hazel, and I think, uh, I think Ronnie is just completely frustrated. I mean, Peter, it's really bordering on the ridiculous. I mean, I like Peter and all, but it's, it's just taken way too long. I mean, five minutes for a 12 break. I know he has Ronnie. He has him where he wants him, but... Uh, it's just a little bit ridiculous what he's doing, and it's it's unfortunate really because it's been a, it's been a good match, but it's just it's really gone overboard now at the moment. What should the referee Colin Brendan be doing out there now, in your opinion, John? Well, he can apply the rule and give him a warning for slow play. Certainly in that instance, I mean, to be making a twelve break and take longer than Ronnie made to make a maximum, that really is it's gone beyond the well, you know the borders there really of fair play. I think. I mean, it's just too long. Off. I mean, I know it's he's not there to make it easy for Ronnie. I understand that, but there's, he's taking far too long. He knows what shot he's going to play, and uh, it's, it's not good at the minute. And the extraordinary thing is, Ronnie's having to keep himself together there. He almost conceded this frame. He certainly did, and he's very, very frustrated at the moment, and uh, I'm not surprised. <laughs> 